Well, hello, hello, hello. So today we are going to try and have a more informed discussion, I hope, about the concept of modern surveillance uh, in our society, bring it back to the broader idea of the panopticon. The panopticon, as I mentioned briefly in my previous video, it was a physical prison design that was proposed by Jeremy Bentham, and which had a central watchtower, and then the um, inmates were kind of circled around that watchtower. The inmates didn't know when they were being watched. The idea was that they would police themselves. And then panopticism is that kind of theory, the overarching surveillance state and how it promotes that same idea of policing yourself. The panopticon has kind of been criticized in terms of its ability to explain a modern surveillance state. The panopticon implies an all-encompassing gaze while modern technologies, uh, particularly CCTV, uh, monitor only selective spaces. So it has been criticized a little bit, but I think it is still relevant to broadly discuss just how pervasive surveillance is in a contemporary society. I wanted to start with some examples of surveillance in the modern world, CCTV, which is in any public space that you go to, it's kind of like as a member of the public, you agree to be watched. First of all, there are so many of them. They are meant to be seen, but you don't know exactly when, what angles, you just kind of forget it's there. So it's a very good example of the Panopticon in that it's everywhere. So you start to monitor your own activities particularly in public spaces. In addition to that, just the general public, just peers, you know they're watching you, you're watching them. Bring it in a little bit further, and I think this is actually quite important and maybe overlooked, and that is the role of your neighborhood uh, or neighbors. So of course we have like the neighborhood watch, which is one aspect of it, which is directly crime related. I live in a more mature neighborhood, so I feel that conservative behavior is more appropriate. The feeling that I get when I'm out in my backyard is being watched at any time. And so that means I'm not going to be naked, I'm not gonna do ridiculous things. But before we go into the home, it's China's social credit system. It's a system that I guess the government has designed that ranks residents based on their activity and gives them a rating that affects their ability to do things. So for example, if you have a really low credit rating, you could be barred from booking flights or buying a house. This article that I was reading basically said that the city said the next step was to use the credit system to punish transport fines, cheating in video games, etc. So it's not just big things, it's also little things. Things that are deemed benevolent, like donating blood, your credit rating goes up. So this credit rating is based purely on surveillance. Most people agree that they feel they're least seen at home. And yet we all acknowledge the kind of role that the internet has in keeping track of us, uh, no matter where we are. The data surveillance is a big thing. I think we all accept it to a degree. I, f I feel like we, we accept how kind of inherent it is in social media sites or just generally searching Google, for example. We have big things perpetuated kind of by like the capitalist nature of our society. Companies kind of monitor us. They'll just store our data and quite often they can sell that to companies that are interested in our shopping habits, our credit card purchases, food, our location. Another thing to note is if we wanted to search something that we thought could be maybe used against us later, um, we would knowingly search maybe through an incognito browser. We do kind of acknowledge that coming back to that panopticon idea that we're policing our our known selves. Another um, thing is what we wear, for example, smart watches. They're kind of promoted to benefit us in some way, but they often have surveillance capabilities. It's interesting that we kind of volunteer this information. So when we check in at places, and again, back to like an overarching idea of panopticism, we are presenting a persona that we think is appropriate for the audience, for the world, which I think is interesting. It does come back to that policing yourself at least in public ID. 
idea. Self-censorship is very inherent in modern surveillance and this idea of the panopticon. With habits and physical stats charted against the norm, we're gonna feel scrutinized. And I think that is important. Basically making yourself in an image based on our society's norms, etc. I wanna have a balanced perspective on it because there are obviously pros, especially these days, to the panopticon. Some of the pros are accountability and of obviously crime control. Specifically mentioned uh, was police brutality. Surveillance it does have its place in holding people accountable, particularly those with a lot of power uh, in our world. At the same time, given that we don't really have possession of any of this, maybe it's also taking away our power. On the one hand, it can give us more power over situations, more control, more accountability. On the other hand, it can kind of take a lot of those things away. So it's, it's kind of hard in some ways to look at it in a fully balanced way with corruption so inherent in a human society i guess accountability is very important surveillance can help us i guess it ultimately comes down to who has access to the data if it's corporations which it tends to be it could have negative implications it, it really does depend who has access to it really what can we do in a modern world to can we do we have to participate in it what? Uh, well, according to this article, those who want to protect people's civil liberties say more cameras are the only real check and balance left. To be honest, I think that does make sense. It's, I don't know if it's a fully balanced perspective, but it is necessary to see both sides of the argument. We just have to kind of hyper participate, I guess. So we really need to hold people with power accountable and if that is through surveillance and they have to police themselves it does make sense that we have to kind of move forward in that direction yeah added surveillance on people that don't have as much on them might be where we need to go in any case i've spoken a lot and i hope i've made some sense definitely look up the panopticon at least to have kind of an understanding of it um it does seem reasonably relevant. I hope to have more discussions in the future. Bye bye!